Greetings from National Resource Center, Sri Ram College of Commerce. I am Aruna Jha. The focus of today's module is audit report. I am sure many of you must be teaching this paper. For those of you who are not in touch with this paper, we will quickly recapitulate the concept of audit in the first part of our discussion. The second part of our module will discuss how professional bodies and regulators are addressing the stakeholders concern for better transparency and also for more detailed financial reporting by the corporates. The question is what are they going to achieve it? Well, they are changing the structure of audit report and elaborating the content of the same. These initiatives, you will agree, are affecting various stakeholders in different ways. In the third part of the discussion, we will learn about it. During the course of last part of our discussion, we will examine what has been the experience of countries across the world with new audit report structure. You will be surprised to know that right from ancient times, on through the industrial revolution, the term audit was associated with hearing of accounts. It was in the 18th century when limited liability corporates emerged and legislations were passed that auditing started getting closely linked with written records. Coming to 20th century, the scope of audit increased due to various developments such as increase in size and complexity of business, increase in the level of investor awareness and many more. Now, it is a matter of common knowledge that users of financial statements are affected by financial representations made therein. Therefore, it is important for them to ascertain the reliability of such statements. An auditor lends credibility to financial statements when he expresses his opinion about the truthfulness and fairness of the state of affairs and profit or loss earned by the entity during the year under audit. We can say he helps in reducing the information risk to the users of financial statements. In addition to the credibility dimension, the audit function also serves as a control over quality of financial information. Let's understand how. The preparers of financial information know that it would be subject to an independent professional review. This knowledge acts as a strong deterrent to potential dissemination of erroneous or fraudulent information. Please appreciate that advantages of audit to different user groups emanate from this attestation function performed by the auditor. We all know that industrial revolution led to the birth of limited liability company form of business. Divorce between ownership and management is the key feature of this form of business organization. Now what is the role of these two in the company? We all know about it. The owners provide the resources to run the business and management's role is to use these resources to create value for various stakeholders. Coming to auditor's role in the setup, he ensures a smooth fiduciary relationship between the two. We know he is the watchdog for shareholders. You may recall the main objective of an independent financial audit is the expression of an opinion regarding the truthfulness and fairness of the presentation of financial statements. This opinion is communicated to the owners or the members through the medium of audit report. Regulators and international and national professional bodies of accountants play an important role in determining the content and the structure of audit report. The endeavor of these bodies along with the regulators is to keep on enhancing the informative value of audit report. 
with the aim of improving financial reporting practices further the international federation of accountants recently made changes in its isa 700 series it relates to various aspects associated with audit report many developed countries like uk ireland netherlands and us have adopted isa 700 to catch up with these, the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India too made changes in standard on auditing SA 700 series. It essentially deals with audit report. As a result, SA 700, SA 705 and SA 706 have been revised and a new standard called SA 701 has been introduced. These are applicable for audit of financial statements prepared for the period starting from April 1, 2018. Revision in SA 700 series has assumed greater significance in the context of criticism of auditors' role in IL and FS fiasco. The revised SA 700 series is likely to fill audit expectation gap. Now, what is this? The audit expectation gap is the difference between what users of financial statements expect the auditor to do and what he does to meet his actual statutory liability. Let us look at these revised essays. What do they relate to? SA 700 is titled Forming an Opinion and Reporting on Financial Statements. SA 705 relates to the modification to the opinion in the independent auditor's report. SA 706 emphasizes on emphasis of meta paragraphs and other meta paragraphs in the independent auditor's report. And SA 701, as we have just said, is the new addition to the family of SA 700 series. Its title is Communicating Key Audit Matters in the Independent Auditor's Report. Kindly note that it is applicable for audit of listed entities only and, of course, the auditor may adopt it in other cases where he deems it fit to do so. SA 700 deals with the responsibility of the auditor in forming his or opinion on the financial statements. Besides this, it also deals with content and form of the auditor report that is issued as an outcome of audit of financial statements. The content in the audit report shall be divided in various elements such as title, followed by addressee, then auditor's opinion, Next to it is basis of opinion shall be there, followed by going concern uncertainty obviously if applicable. Key audit matters are to be placed in the report next. Management responsibilities to the financial statements, responsibilities of the auditor for the audit of financial statements, other responsibilities, all this will follow in the set sequence. Then we have in the end signature of the auditor, place of the signature and of course date of the auditor's report. Now let us discuss each element briefly. First of course is opinion. It is the most important part of the auditor's report. Herein, auditor gives opinion on what? It is on the truthfulness and fairness of financial statements and one their conformity to accounting standards, second, their conformity to legal requirements as well. Let us now find out what does financial statement mean. It comprises in most cases of five things, the balance sheet, the statement of profit and loss, statement of changes in equity, statement of cash flows and last but not least, notes to the financial statements. Auditor's opinion is now going to be placed in the beginning of the audit report. In its previous haftar, SA 700 mandated the placement of audit opinion towards the last part of audit report. The change in the sequence is interesting. It has been done to emphasize the fact that the opinion of the auditor is far more important to the user than aspects such as responsibilities of the management and the auditor. Next element which we'll put focus on is basis of opinion. This, of course, is a new requirement. During your graduation or post-graduation days, 
you must have been told that the auditor performs audit procedures and forms opinion that is expressed through audit report. You may recall there are four major types of audit opinions that can be expressed by an auditor in India through his audit report. The first is unmodified opinion. A report is said to be unqualified or unmodified if it gives true and fair view of financial statements and adheres to all regulatory requirements and conforms to accounting standards. This is what we just said. According to standard on auditing SA 705 entitled modifications to the opinion in the independent auditor's report, modified report is issued when auditor expresses a qualified opinion or an adverse opinion or a disclaimer of opinion. Now what is the underlying difference between all these three types of opinions? Well, it is the auditor's professional judgment about two aspects. First, the materiality of the subject matter of the qualification and secondly, its pervasiveness. That is the extent to which the misstatements affects different parts of financial statements. Let us understand this through an example. If a misstatement in inventory is there, the auditor should consider the effect of such misstatement on different items of financial statements such as total current assets, current liabilities, working capital, total assets, income tax, GST payable, cost of goods sold and of course earnings available to the shareholders. The auditor issues a qualified opinion where he has certain reservations about the propositions under examination and they are material but kindly note not pervasive as to warrant an adverse opinion. The overall statements despite misstatements give a true and fair view. If in the above example inventory is not a significant portion of assets, the auditor may choose to give a qualified opinion otherwise an adverse report. To take another example, substantial amount of credit sales have been classified as cash sales. This may result in issuance of a qualified report because of materiality of the transaction. But if credit sales of the same amount are not recorded in the books of accounts, adverse opinion may be issued because of its pervasiveness, that is, its effects on sales, accounts receivable, taxes payable, current assets, total assets, operating income and owner's equity too. We can conclude by saying that as misstatements become more pervasive, the likelihood of issuing an adverse opinion than a qualified one increases. Sometimes what happens is client may impose material limitations on the scope of audit. For example, in one case, client may have multi-location warehouses. If it undertakes physical count of inventory without information to the auditor, the auditor is not able to observe it. Please note that this is a standard audit procedure prescribed by ICI to verify the inventory. The auditor may issue a disclaimer of opinion instead of a qualified opinion in this case because of scope limitation. Further, the fundamental difference between a disclaimer of opinion and an adverse opinion is that in case of the former, there is insufficient evidence to form an opinion, but sufficient evidence is available in the case of letter. In case of disclaimer of opinion, the auditor is not sure whether the financial statements give a true and fair view. But in case auditor gives an adverse opinion, he categorically states that financial statements do not give a true and fair view. Coming back to the element we were discussing, basis of opinion, it is to be given in all types of audit reports irrespective of the type of opinion. Previously, this section was required only in cases where auditor modified his opinion. It is mandatory to state herein that the audit was conducted in accordance with the standards of auditing and also whether the audit evidence obtained is sufficient and appropriate. 
Look at it, this extract from Raymond Limited 2018-19 Auditor Report to understand this element better. I will give you some time to read it. Hope you are done. I like to emphasize that the sufficiency here refers to the quantity of audit evidence and appropriateness refers to the quality of the same. Kindly note that the basis for opinion section includes statement regarding independence. The auditor has to clearly state that he is independent of the entity and has fulfilled the other relevant ethical responsibilities relating to the audit. This includes code of ethics issued by ICI together with ethical requirements that are relevant to the audit of financial statements under the provision of Companies Act 2013 and the rules made thereunder. As already stated, this is a new requirement introduced under SA 700. The next element relates to material uncertainty relating to going concern if applicable of course. This is also a new requirement. If a material uncertainty related to going concern exists and very importantly disclosure in the financial statements are adequate then separate section titled material uncertainty related to going concern is required with explanation. Earlier this was reported within emphasis of matter paragraph but only when mitigating factors existed. Otherwise, auditor gave disclaimer of opinion. It is important to understand what do we mean by mitigating factors. They are the factors that reduce the adverse impact of any happening. For example, if there is a liquidity crisis in an organization, obtaining a sanction of working capital loan from a bank becomes a mitigating factor. In many instances, the shareholders can cut down their losses if they understand this element of audit report completely. The case in point is Kingfisher's audit report 2012-13. The auditor introduced an emphasis of meta paragraph in the audit report. They wrote and I quote, attention is invited to note 45 to the notes regarding the financial statements being prepared on a going concern basis notwithstanding the fact that the company's net worth is eroded. Net worth as at March 31st, 2013 is at X lakhs. The scheduled air operators permit issued by the Director General of Civil Aviation, Government of India has lapsed and the consortium banks have recalled their debts to the company. These events cast significant doubt on the ability of the company to continue as a going concern." Unquote. They wrote about the mitigating factors. Please note when they state, I quote, the appropriateness of the said basis is inter alia dependent on the company's ability to obtain renewal of the permit, infuse requisite funds for meeting its obligation, including statutory liabilities and those in respect of contracts entered into for purchase of goods and assets, rescheduling of debt and other liabilities and resuming normal operations. Our opinion is not modified in this respect." Unquote. Coming next is a very important element of audit report, key audit matters. SA 701 makes it mandatory for the auditor to report on key audit matters if any in the audit report. This requirement is applicable only to listed entities as I have just pointed out. He can also do so in case of other entities if in his professional judgment it is necessary. Here, it is important for us to understand what are these key audit matters. Of course, they are in the auditor's professional judgment, those matters which are of most significance in the audit of financial statements of current period. Key audit matters are selected from the matters communicated with those charged with governance. I like to point out that before the introduction of SA 701, the auditor was not required to report on key matters if 
he receives satisfactory explanation from those charged with governance on these. But with reporting on these becoming mandatory, the transparency and the informative value of audit report is likely to go up. Description of key audit matter will always include matters such as why matter was considered to be a key audit matter, how the auditor and the management addressed the matter, and also reference to related disclosures. Further, how matter was addressed in audit may include aspects of audit response or approach, brief overview of procedures performed, indication of outcome of auditors procedures and key observation with respect to those matters. This extract from Raymond from sorry audit report of Raymond Limited 2018-19 is an example of the manner in which key audit matter is to be reported along with the fact as to how auditor addressed the key audit matter. Kindly go through it. Hope you are done. If there is no key matter in the auditor's judgment, he shall mention this point explicitly in his audit report. A new section on other information of course where applicable is to be incorporated in auditor report now. Other information may relate to any financial or non-financial information that is included in entity's annual report but not included in financial statements and audit report. It may relate to items such as capital expenditures by the segment or explanations of critical accounting estimates and related assumptions besides others. SA 720 in its revised form increases the responsibility of the auditor related to other information in enhancing the reliability of the financial statements. Let's look at the extract from auditor's report of Infoices Limited for 2018-19 which so beautifully sets the expectations of the users. Under the head information other than standalone financial statements and auditors report thereon. It states and I quote, the company's board of directors is responsible for the preparation of other information. The other information comprises the information included in the management decision and analysis board's report including an exchange an exchange to board's report business responsibility report, corporate governance and shareholders information but does not include the standalone financial statement and our auditors report thereon. Our opinion on the standalone financial statements does not cover the other information and we do not express any form of assurance conclusion thereon. Uncaught. Coming to next element, responsibilities of management and others charged with governance. We should note that it has become more elaborate under SA 700. This section of auditor's report is now expanded to identify also those responsible for the oversight of financial reporting process which in many cases is the audit committee. The company's board of directors is responsible for the matters stated in section 134 subsection 5 of the act with respect to the preparation of these standalone financial statements. The revised standard has introduced a very new requirement. Now in preparing the financial statements, management is responsible for assessing the company's ability to continue as a going concern. It should disclose matters related to going concern if any. Besides this, it should use the going concern basis of accounting unless management either intends to liquidate the company or to seize operations. Auditor's responsibility is also now more elaborate. 
the detailed description of the auditor's responsibility is included in audit report. It relates to matters such as fraud, internal control, accounting policies and accounting estimates, communication with those charged with governance and many more. This is obviously a lot of content. Because of the increased length of this section, SC 700 now says they can include a provision that instead of reproducing auditor's responsibility, the report can provide the link to the relevant authority which prescribes the same. Next, the fact that auditor is giving reasonable assurance should be clearly stated in audit report. It is interesting to note that the auditor bases his opinion on persuasive evidence and not conclusive. Hence, he can give only reasonable assurance. Let's understand why standard audit procedures require auditor's opinion to be based on persuasive and not conclusive evidence. Let us take the example of purchases recorded in the purchase book. To verify these, the auditor will look at supporting documents such as purchase invoice, inspection report and purchase order among others. If an auditor wishes to go for conclusive evidence, he has to go and see the vendor's books of account. Of course, no sane vendor will allow such access. Therefore, the auditor looks for persuasive evidence only. Auditor of Raymond Limited in his audit report of 2018-19 states, and I quote, Our objectives are to obtain reasonable assurance about whether the financial statements as a whole are free from material misstatement, whether due to fraud or error, and to issue an auditor's report that includes our opinion. Reasonable assurance is a high level of assurance, but it is not a guarantee that an audit conducted in accordance with standards on auditing will always detect a material misstatement when it exists." Unquote. Next is report on other legal and regulatory requirements. This section deals with other reporting responsibilities in the auditor's report that are in addition to those under essays. For example, reporting as per company's auditor's report popularly called CARO 2016 as per requirements of section 143 subsection 11 of the Companies Act 2013 and the additional reporting requirements specified under section 143 subsection 3. There is no change in the remaining elements. Now coming to part 3 of our discussion, it relates to impact of SA 700 series on various stakeholders. The new format of audit report has an important influence on various users. Let us understand how it influences different stakeholders. For management and board of directors, it provides an opportunity for increased communication between the auditors and those charged with governance. They would have to give increased attention to disclosure in the financial statements. The next set of stakeholders, investors and analysts, will get meaningful information on material matters and this better data will certainly result in better decision making. Since key matters will differ from one organization to the other, the reporting will become customized and would move away from standardized or boilerplate reports. The new audit structure and content will make the work of regulators easy. How? It is likely to bring in transparency in the financial reporting practices of the corporates. Auditors will get benefited from reporting under SS 700 series. They'll give renewed focus on matters to be reported. There will be enhanced professional skepticism with regards to auditors, the way they approach their work. Professional skepticism is an attitude that includes a questioning mind, being alert to conditions that may indicate possible misstatement due to fraud or error, and a critical assessment of audit evidence. 
Next question is, to what extent will it be able to fill the intended audit expectation gap? We will discuss this question on the basis of the report titled Future of Audit, the Transformed Auditors Report by leading audit firm Grant Thornton. According to it, while the expectations from the standard setters are quite high, the new report rightly points out that what is needed is a substantial change in the mindset of all those concerned, be it management, those charged with governance and even auditors. Management and those charged with governance should see information given in audit report, particularly on key audit matters as an attempt to improve corporate governance. Auditors will need to do two things besides what is done to give insightful report. First is to manage risk and second is to improve audit quality. How? New data analysis techniques will help them to fulfill both these needs. There are professionals who are skeptical about the purpose new structure of audit report will serve. They are of the opinion that even these reports may eventually end up being boilerplate as they may not be drastic change in the reporting from one year to the next. Unless of course there are significant events or transactions which affect the entity. The professional bodies backing the new structure have a counter argument. They point out that the intent of the standard is to make the reporting specific to the entity to the air and to the issues of that particular air. Now we are coming to the last part of our discussion that is part 4. Herein we will focus on the experience of other countries with new audit report structure under ISA 700 and important takeaways for India from the experience. The Grant Thornton report further points out that UK's Association of Chartered Certified Accountants analyzed 1,321 key audit matters reported across 560 audit reports in 11 countries Brazil, Cyprus, Kenya, Nigeria, Oman, Romania, South Africa, the UAE and the Zimbabwe to evaluate the first year implementation of new standards. The key finding was that the benefits of key audit matters went beyond better information for investors. These have led to improved governance, better audit quality and enhanced corporate reporting. The audit firm also studied what is the subject matter of key audit matters most frequently being reported upon by the entities covered under study. <clears throat> the finding is quite interesting and asset impairment seems to be by far the most important CAM reported across, followed by revenue doubtful debts, goodwill impairment and taxation. These features are significant risk areas in most audits and it's not surprising to see them in this list. The new auditor's report has already been effective in several countries, both developed and developing. The list includes countries like China, Australia, Singapore, Malaysia and certain countries in Europe. Of course, the UK was one of the first countries to rule out these requirements. The UK's Financial Reporting Council conducted a review of the second year of extended auditor report. It received feedback that investors welcomed extended auditor reporting and greatly valued the enhanced information it provided. The Public Company Accounting Oversight Board of USA has also adopted a corresponding auditing standard on the same lines. Its requirements are expected to apply in a phased manner. The first phase is already applicable for audit for fiscal years ending on or after 15 December 2017. The requirements related to reporting critical audit matters which correspond to key audit matters will take effect in a staggered manner beginning from audits for fiscal years ending on or after 30th June 2019. A similar study on the first year experience with the enhanced reporting 
in Singapore found that the audit reports brought about insightful disclosures by the auditor. It also led to positive behavioral changes among various stakeholders, surprisingly, isn't it, in the financial reporting ecosystems. The findings included the expected increase in audit committee deliberations, investors using the reports to identify significant accounting and auditing issues, as well as management adding more disclosures in line with key audit matters reported. In India too, the regulators are hoping that the revised SA 700 series will bring in more transparency and increase the communicative value of audit report. The new changes made to the auditing standards SA 700 series will significantly enhance value of independent audit. Increased auditors focus on going concern matters and added focus on transparency in the audit report will lay the foundation for the future of global auditor reporting and improved auditor communication. Not all this can be achieved unless all the stakeholders realize the usefulness of new format of audit report. As teachers, we can help the regulators and the professional bodies in spreading awareness about the same and its usefulness. Thank you so much for being wonderful audience. Thanks again.